Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, ROS2 Q&A here at The Construct. My name is Rodrigo. Today we're going to be looking at this question here that I found in uh, ROS2 ROS Answers, um, in which this person is trying to implement uh, multi-robot navigation with the same robot, so an identical robot. So he's trying to see uh, what he can do to adapt his simulation to have the separated frames, for example, so separated odometry, base link, laser links uh, that you'll need uh, in order for later apply things like navigation to. So in here he's uh, talking about using a useful tool, which is the TF frame prefix. Once you're uh, launching the robot state publisher, you can give that parameter, which would give a prefix to your um, frame tree that you're launching there. So, but then he says, uh, then NAV2 seems to have problems with it, with adding this TF prefix. So he's sort of asking, what's the best way it would be done? I'm gonna tell you the, the way we've done it. We're, I'm not saying it's the, the best way, but this way it works uh, for, for navigation too, which you can then uh, take a look at our course that we offer for navigation too, and see the, the multi-robot aspect of how you would apply it to a setup like this. So I'm going to show you how we did it. All right, guys. So let's go. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you this in our platform. So this is the constructsim.com. So uh, just got to type that in. And if you don't have an account, you can make one really quick and uh, log in. And I'm going to be sharing with you a Rosject, which is one of our, uh, the way we call our projects. Uh, I'm going to be showing, uh, sharing with this in the link of the description, this link. And if you paste it on your browser, it should send you to something like this. And uh, we're, this is the setup that we're going to be using. So all you gotta do is click run. And uh, while this is loading, let me just take you back to the constructsim.com and show you uh, what I was talking about, the navigation course. So we have a lot, 50 plus courses for uh, robotics, for ROS and ROS2, including uh, what I was talking about, um, multi-robot navigation, which we uh, do in this course right here. We also have even another one for advanced uh, roster navigation, which we go more in depth. But this is the first step to do it. And so I recommend you guys take it. I'm going to be posting the link of the description in there too. So, all right, it looks like it has loaded. So oh, we'll need this later, so I'll just keep that. And actually, I have launched the simulation already. So for that, you will need to just paste this command in a new terminal. You open a new terminal like this with this button right here, and then just paste the command. Um, right here, it's already launched, right? I can see, so if I open Gazebo, which is this button down here, Okay, looks like no. So I'm just going to launch it again. <laughs> Control C. And it's that command that uh, I showed you in this notebook. So there it goes. So we can see that we have an environment. This is our robot cafeteria simulation with two robots. Uh, they're based on the TurtleBot 3. One is right here and the other one is right here. Uh, and then they're identical. They're just color is different. Uh, so what we need in order to do something like multi-robot navigation is to have first the topic separated. So you want to have something like this. Ross to topic list. You want to have a command veil and autumn, and if you have a scan, then a scan. 
for both all robots. So here we have barista one command veil, here we have barista two command veil, and so on with the topics that our robot offers. So for example, if we were to uh, try and move it with the teleop twist keyboard, remapping the command bell topic to say barista one command bell you should be able to move only the top robot there which is moving then the same for the robot number two here there it is it starts moving because I'm commanding that one so that's the first part we need. And then the second is to have the TF tree separated. We can look at these with the command RQT TF tree. Then it'll appear in this graphical tools button there it is. So you can see that there's two separate trees, one for barista 2, one for barista 1, which is what we want to separate them uh, in order to, if we have navigation, we would have something like map up here connected to autumn and autumn for each robot. So this is the setup we need. Let me just show you how I did this in the code. So we are running this from a package called Barista Rust 2. And in here we have packages Barista Description and Barista Gazebo. They're the important ones. Gazebo is to, for gazebo related things and uh, description is for description and URDFs, things like that. This is just the convention for, for package like this. And if we look at the main two robots launch that we launched, we'll see that it's pretty straightforward. We have a, a launch file to only launch the gazebo world. So it just spawns a world uh, and loads a, an existing world, the, in this case, our cafeteria here. And then we have um, two launches, one for each robot. Uh, so if we go to, say, the first one, the barista one launch, you'll see that we're giving it a robot name and then barista one, barista two, robot one, robot two, and same for the barista two launch. So all, all that changes is giving it the pose that we, we're going, where we're going to spawn it in and the name, everything else is the same. And then this calls a spawn launch.py, which is in the gazebo description file, uh, which what it does, it actually loads the description file. So the URDF or the Shakro. Uh, we, in this case, we have a Shakro file called Mule Barista Shakro, uh, which is this one, and it just calls up other bunch of Shakros to make the, the robot that we have here. So here's the important part. So like I said, we do use the frame prefix, and we give it a variable called entity name, and this is the robot name that we gave it. So if we go back to the previous one, you'll see here that we're giving it an argument called entity name and it's robot name, which is the name we pass it first. So robot one, robot two, barista one, barista two. So we do do that. We give it the frame prefix and then we add the slash. So that way it works. And then let me just, uh, then we give it this chakra command which is the other important part that goes for the topic. So the first part is for the frames. Second part is for the topics because the topics are being published from gazebo plugins defined in the description file. In this case, we say uh, the chakra and then we give the path for the file. And then we give it this robot name, entity name, which in this case would be robot one to our command. So when we load this file, the mule barista chakra, you'll see that we have a argument that we're expecting here. 
so it'll have whatever we want. So in this case, robot one. For this, for this launch file, it will be barista two. Uh, so now this is the other important part. We're passing it this argument, and then we're using it where it matters. For example, we have our um, gazebo properties. So the barista kabuki gazebo. This is a kabuki robot. And if we look at the top, we're given that argument, robot name, and it'll be barista one, two, three, depending on the launch file. And then in the gazebo plugins, for example, this diff drive, we're passing it, we're passing that variable here for the command L topic, so it has, uh, it, has it in front. Um, and same for the frame that is going to be publishing. Uh, the autumn frame is published by this plugin, not the main shackle file. And same for the uh, LiDAR that we have. This is the Hokuyo. Well, a little different, but it works both ways. Here we give the namespace, our variable robot name, and then we specify what frame is going to be from because it's going to change every for every robot. So then we give it like this and then that's how we ob obtain um, the separated topics so that's pretty much it so basically just remember it's important to separate that we need uh, different tf tr trees like independent from each other uh, and then we need topics uh, that are separated so this is how we achieved it we use the TF prefix for in the robot publisher node, robot state publisher, sorry. And then uh, for uh, we give it an extra variable uh, called robot name for the chakra command, which will pass it then to the gazebo plugins in order for them to fit based on the number of robots we're launching. Um, so if we wanted to do three three robots, we would just have to modify this to have a third one and that way it would work. Uh, and here we would just change this pose and the robot name and we would just keep spawning different robots. So yeah, let me know if there you have any questions. Again, uh, check out the links in the descriptions for the Rosject and the navigation course where you will learn how you can then apply multi-robot navigation to a setup like this and how you can do it with NAV2. And yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, for the next video and uh, hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye. Do you need a deeper knowledge of the ROS2 navigation system? Then this course, Advanced ROS2 Navigation, is for you. Cosmap filters, custom behaviors, and custom plugins. These are some of the things that you are going to learn in this course. In the first unit, we are going to teach you about the new features added to Navigation 2, like the Simple Commander API, the follow waypoints or the keep out zones. On the second unit, you're going to learn how to create your own behaviors using behavior trees. On the third unit, you're going to learn how to create your own plugins for navigation, like Cosma plugins, path planning plugins, and controller plugins. On the fourth unit, you are going to learn how the controller server works in deep. All this only in the Advanced Frosty Navigation course. Start learning now.